Hi, my name is James McLeod, uh, better known by most people as Jigsy. And this year, I'm running the Great North Run for the If You Care Share Foundation. And you know, the reason that I'm running the, the Great North Run for the If You Care Share Foundation, um, it stems from my lived experience. You know, I'm a young man, 22, who despite his age, has had a wealth of experience when it comes to his mental health. But more importantly, through the adverse experiences, he's been able to overcome the mental health difficulties. And the reason that I experience adverse mental health stems from something that happened in my childhood. I was 16, like most young men, in a relationship with a girl. Didn't last long, you know, we were together for about six months. Finished, um, you know, she broke up with me. And then a few months down the line, all of a sudden came out and said, and falsely accused me of raping uh, her, naturally, because I was still in school. The teachers, the school, uh, the police, you know, there was an investigation, but despite the seriousness of the allegation, you know, I was quite lucky to be supported by everyone, including this girl's friends who did come out and speak against her um, to support me. And I think because I had this support at the time by everyone, you know, this girl then left the school. And because I had the support of everyone, even outside the broader community, you know, despite the seriousness of the allegation, I was still allowed to referee young children um, because I was a prominent referee at the time. And, you know, I did make everyone aware of this allegation and they straight away, you know, stubbed this and knew it was false. I didn't lose any friends because of this. If anything, I gained friends, um, you know, probably because a lot of people felt sorry for me. You know, I think there was this misconception around my peers and, you know, the teachers and everyone, even in my family, that, you know, this event didn't affect me. And on the surface, I can understand why that is, you know, because I was quite a large, you know, outgoing character in school, you know, one that was very fortunate to have many friends, quite a popular footballer at the time, um, you know, in a very successful school football team. Looking from the outside in, you know, it appeared as if this event didn't affect me at all. And like many that go through adverse life experiences, I found, you know, negative outlets. Um, I turned to drink, even started engaging in taking drugs and naturally, you know, began to engage less in physical activity and football, in running um, that I used quite often as a vehicle when I was playing football. So yeah, I went from a young, you know, 16 year old with no cares in the world to someone who, you know, was battling these emotions on the inside and going into school and acting the character that he wasn't. You know, I'd go in and act Jack the Lad, mess around in lessons, you know, that led me to, you know, not being a bad student, but I wasn't necessarily a good student. And, you know, this went on for around four years. You know, I was in denial. I didn't accept that this event had affected me. You know, when I did open up to my friends, it would always be in drink. And then the next day I'd pass it off as if I was only opening up about it because I was drunk and sort of say, oh, you know, I don't know why I said that. That was a lie. For four years, you know, battled these feelings of, you know, the roller coaster of ups and downs um, until the 12th of September, 2020, um, which was four years after this event, I decided I could no longer take how I was feeling. You know, it was one day that typically after a few months of getting fit, training, you know, I decided to, you know, because I wasn't feeling too great to drink with my friends. And on that day, you know, I decided, you know, I couldn't take it anymore. And I actually went to the Time Bridge in Newcastle with the intention of, you know, ending my life. And, you know, I was very fortunate on the day that, you know, one of my ex-friends did ring the police um, and the police, you know, took me off the bridge. And the thing that scared me the most about that day was, you know, it wasn't the first time I'd been at that bridge with the intention of ending my life, but it was the first time where generally, if the police hadn't have grabbed me off the bridge, you know, I wouldn't be here. You know, the stigma of mental health, especially around young men, you know, when I attempted to take my life, I was only 20. Yeah, I think not having enough support mechanisms around me and um, actually engage in was part of the reason that this event did swallow me up. Um, and that isn't to say that I didn't have support of people around me. You know, the school supported me, my friends, their families, everyone supported me. But I just, because everyone was aware of this issue, it was very public, you know, it wasn't just a case of my school, it was the case of, you know, schools in the local area, everyone would come up and approach me and ask me about this. And I was very open about it. 
For me, the stigma of mental health was one of the most prominent issues of why I didn't engage. But actually through engaging in mental health support since that day, I have actually appreciated that, you know, talking about your problems, you know, a problem's shared as a problem's halved. And often after that occasion, months down the line, I'd wonder why hadn't I done this sooner? Yeah, often when I talk around the 12th of September, you know, some people have this perception that, you know, it was a negative day, characterised just by negativity. But actually for me, it was a it was a turning point in my life. After that day, I couldn't shy away that this event had affected me. And from that day, you know, I started to engage in running uh, more frequently. As I say, when I was younger, you know, I did run occasionally to help, you know, my football. But yeah, from the 12th of September, you know, I started, you know, engaging in mental health support and actually, you know, using running as an outlet. Because of this event, I went from someone who was 10 stone, soaking wet, to someone who was 14 and a half stone at his biggest. I had put on naturally a lot of weight because all I could do was drink, go out to try and get rid of these emotions. And, you know, I started training and like many of us, that's sort of something new or relatively new. You know, I improved quite a lot. You know, I couldn't run a 5K in 28 minutes when I first started with Vince. I then ran 8K in 28 minutes. 13 weeks later, which for those familiar with running is quite impressive. But then again, it's relative, you know, I'm not Mo Farah. But yeah, I think because I'd seen an outlet through counselling and using running as a vehicle, I think that led me to think that running was the only answer. And again, I think because at the time, you know, I'd contacted one of my friends to sort of do a similar sort of publication where we sort of encouraged those to run in the lockdown um, and obviously where I talked around my experiences but I think that perception of oh you know Jigsy's now open with his mental health I think that led people to think you know that's it then you know it doesn't affect him anymore and actually you know as time would tell when I returned home naturally through you know university being term time you know these emotions that I'd been running quite literally from would start a resurface and again which led me to then experience adverse mental health and then ended me to make excuses for why I wasn't training and then the cycle would start again I'd then go back to uni the next year start engaging in mental health support and over rely on running where actually this year I've seen a lot greater benefit we're actually doing the prerequisites first actually focusing on my mental health through counselling first and then getting back into running and again I think often when people find that positive outlet like running for me or for Mutai, for Kai. You know, they tend to over rely on that positive outlet. You know, as much as that positive outlet might help you in the short term, I don't think it's a long term solution. I think the best solution is that combination of both, using mental health support and that positive outlet that you've sought. But for me, you know, the outcome I've always long sought to, to happen is never going to come to fruition, you know. I would love nothing more than, you know, this girl to come out and, you know, hold her hands up and go, you know what, it's wrong what I said, but, you know, I lied. And again, I'm not one of these sort of people where, you know, I'd want people to go with pitchforks and, you know, attack this girl. I'd openly come out and, you know, thank her for finally finding it in her heart to, you know, admit she lied. But unfortunately, what I've learned through time is, you know, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. So what I can do, you know, as much as that event that I'd hope, you know, of her coming out and admitting that she's lying. But what I can do is use that lived experience to steer positive change, not only for myself, but for others, by sharing my story and by sharing some of the difficulties. Because I think there's a misconception out there, especially around those that are first initially engaging in mental health support. I think there's this misconception from the public where as soon as someone engages in mental health support, that's it. You know, it's plain sailing, everything is up from there and um, when really you know the journey is like a roller coaster it's you know like life you know there'll be times where you're on the up you think i finally overcome this and then you'll finally meet you know bump into someone that reminds you of the time and yeah i think often my biggest sort of criticism of mental health i don't think it's as complicated as many of us make it i think it's quite simple when we've got environments that young men like myself or young women where where they feel they can open up and there's people out there that they know they can open up to it's just as simple as that i think when we make environments that are conducive to young men's needs 
then they'll open up around their mental health and understand that there's no stigma attached to it. And again, coming with that, we've got, got to get rid of misconceptions around mental health, what mental health is, what, mental, what people are who suffer or experience mental health are. So yeah, from the 12th of September, I not only had to support my friends, my family, um, many others who had met me throughout life. Vince Wilson, my coach, um, you know, someone who I never knew. Um, you know, I heard distantly mentioned at the dinner table um, by my dad as someone who he used to run against. And naturally, because my dad's quite a big lad, he's 20 stone, you know, I didn't actually believe that he ran in the first place, but it turns out it would be true. And yeah, from, from that day as well, a big initiative and organisation that's helped me overcome my difficulties with mental health is the If You Care Share Foundation. You know, Matthew, Dean, all the other members of the If You Care, you know, I met, you know, randomly. Essentially, I was playing football at uh, Durham Uni. You know, I trialled out for the uni team. Wasn't quite good enough to get in and met, bumped into someone, um, David Fennick, who, you know, I started talking around my football at the time and said, oh, you know, I help out with a club at Durham United. You know, you should come play. Um, and from that day, you know, I started to get introduced to Matthew, Tom, Colin, Dean, all members of the If You Care. But I never knew they had a mental health charity. I never knew the If You Care Share Foundation existed. And from that day, from the 12th of September, when, you know, it was made public of my, you know, time on the bridge, um, you know, they offered out a helping hand. And again, I've never had, you know, I've never engaged in their services because they specialise in suicide bereavement. But, you know, a lot of their founding members has helped me overcome, whether that's with advice or, you know, just by being there whenever I've had one of those down days that we all have. So, yeah, I think because of that support that the, fam that the family and, you know, the If You Care have provided me, you know, that's, that sets up really why I'm passionate about running the Great North Run for the If You Care Share Foundation. But again, I don't want the, my personal sort of relationship and personal understanding of their organisation to overshadow why I'm actually running for the If You Care. I, I use my lived experience of suicide, you know, suicide attempts. Um, and obviously the work that the charity do in the local area goes hand in hand for why I'm passionate for running the If You Care share. So yeah, Great Enough Run this year falls on the 10th of September. And for those unfamiliar with the If You Care Share Foundation, they're a suicide bereavement charity based in Chesley Street, who was set up in remembrance of Daniel O'Hare, Matthew's brother, who tragically took his own life. And on the 10th of September, the If You Care Share Foundation encourage those that support the charity to wear a piece of clothing inside out because it's CS conversations. It's quite weird to see someone with their top inside out. Um, and that's used as a vehicle to then hopefully inspire those to talk around how they're feeling. As I said, the, on the 10th of September, you know, it falls in within a couple of days of that 12th of, 12 of September, which is an important day for me and my family. So this year, um, I'll be partnering up with the If You Care Share Foundation and the Mental Shift CIC to quite literally go inside out. I'll be sharing a documentary video where I'll talk openly around my mental health, quite literally going inside out in a hope to encourage those that may be experiencing adverse mental health at the moment to engage in mental health support.